Well, hi, you folks, and welcome back to another episode of Treacle Map, your nostalgic connection, where we take a look at a variety of people, places, and things from the past through a sticky sweet veil of nostalgia and encourage our viewers to let us know in the comments what makes you nostalgic so we can feature it in a future episode. I'm your host, Joseph Nocera, and today will be our first in our month of Christmas specials. That's right, for every week after Thanksgiving leading up to Christmas, we'll have an all-new episode talking about the endless nostalgic things associated with this holiday. Today's nostalgic Christmas person is the legendary actor and singer Bing Crosby. Thought of as America's first pop singer, as his rise in popularity coincided with the advent of radio, television, and the microphone. He's one of the first singers to take advantage of the unique characteristics of the microphone, introducing a much more intimate style. Where singers used to belt out songs, with the advent of the microphone, singers could sing in speaking tones and lower registers, of which Bing was known for. He's best known for singing Irving Berlin's White Christmas, which is the best-selling single of all time, selling well over 50 million copies worldwide. He recorded over 1,600 different songs and acted in over 70 feature films. Among these are the Road series where he starred alongside Bob Hope in titles such as Road to Singapore, Road to Bali, and Road to Hong Kong. He starred alongside Danny Kaye, Vera Ellen, and Rosemary Clooney in the film adaptation of White Christmas. High Society saw Bing share the screen with Frank Sinatra, Grace Kelly, and Louis Armstrong. And in his last television appearance, he and David Bowie performed a duet of The Little Drummer Boy and Peace on Earth. Though he was beloved on the big screen and for his voice, some of his children have said he was an abusive son of a bitch. Others have said this was exaggerated to sell books. What have you heard and what do you think? Our nostalgic place is one that many children fantasize about from a young age. The place where Santa Claus lives, the North Pole. Being the farthest place north on the face of the earth, what better place for Santa to have his factory and workshop, where he can work all year round without any distractions? The North Pole is often depicted with lots of snow, a humongous castle or factory, many elves who help Santa make all the toys, and of course a candy cane striped pole with a gold top, so there's no mistaking where you are. Many stories show the spectacular wildlife that live in these conditions like penguins, polar bears, and Santa's particular favorite, his magic reindeer. So, would you visit the North Pole if you could, or is it too cold up there for you? And today's nostalgic thing is a simple everyday household item that's become a Christmas tradition to many. Hanging stockings. One of the most nostalgic Christmas sights is seeing stockings hung on the fireplace mantle with care. Especially if you have a big family with many stockings over the fire. On Christmas Day, children of all ages wake to find small presents like candy, toiletries, fruits, snacks, and other small gifts in their stockings. Commonly referred to as stocking stuffers, this is usually how families kick off the present opening festivities. There are many theories on how this tradition began. Some suggest that Santa snuck the presents into children's stockings drying over the fireplace because toys were outlawed. Another story states that some families couldn't afford a fancy bag to put the toys in, so they just used old socks. Hey, maybe it was just a convenient place to put them since he comes down the chimney anyway. But one thing's for sure, you don't want to end up with coal in your stocking, because that means you haven't been a good little girl or boy. What's your favorite stocking stuffer? Did you ever get coal one year? Were you better behaved the next year? Ah, uh, it's retromercial time. Today's retromercial is probably America's best known product with a little twist of Christmas. Check it out. We've covered many Pepsi Pop music ads, and even new Coke. But do you remember when Coca-Cola started to use these computer-animated polar bears for their Christmas ads in the early 90s? Coke's use of polar bears actually dates as far back as 1922 when they first used them in this French ad campaign. 
The bear sporadically appeared throughout the following 70 years or so, and then in 1993, Coke began to use them during the Christmas season. I remember seeing these ads as a kid and thinking how realistic they looked. Computer graphics have certainly come a long way since then, but that just adds even more to the nostalgia of these 90s Christmas Coke commercials. Oh boy, it's animation sensation time and I'm super excited to present this one. It's my favorite Rankin-Bass Christmas special, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Starting with Rudolph in 1964, Rankin-Bass's formula was to take a hit song and using stop-motion animation, tell a story around that song and others. They also always featured a celebrity's voice to tell the story. This one has two. Fred Astaire narrates this origin story of Santa Claus as mail carrier Kluger, and Mickey Rooney plays the big man himself. We watch how this abandoned baby is raised by a family of elves, learns to make toys, and though they are outlawed in the nearby town, Kris Kringle delivers them to the children anyway, making an outlaw of himself, which is why he sets up shop at the North Pole. He befriends a penguin, a not-so-evil warlock, and meets the woman who becomes Mrs. Claus. The music is fantastic, songs like Put One Foot in Front of the Other, When You're the First Toy Maker to the King, If You Sit on My Lap Today, and of course the title song, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. This special absolutely breaks the nostalgia scale, and I can hardly wait to watch it every year. Do you know and love this Rankin-Bass special as much as I do? Before we continue, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Crochet by Beal. Offering custom handmade wearable items like scarves and hats to adorable Amy Gurumi lovable creatures at affordable prices. Contact Adelia at crochetbydeal at gmail.com and get 10% off when you place your order today. It's a great gift idea for any age and a chance to support a small business. Crochet by Deal, link is in the description. Also, check out all my recent music videos right here on YouTube and my original music on your favorite streaming platforms. Just search Joseph Nocera. It's Joseph with an F. Follow me on Instagram at Joseph Nocera Music, where you'll find even more content and behind the scenes looks at what I'm up to. Don't forget to like, share, and comment what makes you nostalgic, and subscribe for more episodes of Treacle Matter. And consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Link is in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and now, back to more Treacle Matter. Okie dokie, it's time for our Christmas nostalgic knockout, Zoe De Chanel. The first time I ever saw her, she played Jovi, the cute blonde in probably one of the best modern Christmas classic movies, Elf. We're introduced to her lovely singing voice, and we get to watch her go from being a bit of a humbug to falling in love with Buddy and the Christmas season. But she actually got her start before that in 1999's Mumford and other films including Almost Famous and The New Guy. She then went on to appear in even more films such as The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Yes Man, 500 Days of Summer, and Our Idiot Brother. Starting in 2011, she starred as Jessica Day in the hit Fox sitcom New Girl for which she was nominated for several awards. Though I enjoy her other films and New Girl, she'll always be Jovi from Elf to me. What do you think of Zoe Deschanel? What was the first role you saw her in? And now for our monumental moment in music. This is a Christmas song that became very popular in 1958, reaching number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Let's remember the classic Christmas tune, The Chipmunk Song, or Christmas Don't Be Late. Written by Ross Bagdasarian under the stage name David Seville, he sang and recorded the song at various tape speeds to achieve the high chipmunk tone. The song won three Grammy Awards in 1958 for Best Comedy Performance, Best Children's Recording, and Best Engineered Record. It sold 4.5 million copies in seven weeks and was the only Christmas song to top the charts at number one before Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. The song's signature catchphrase of David yelling at Alvin has become a unique, hilarious Christmas quote, and to this day it's played all over the radio and streaming services during this magical time of year. What do you think of Alvin and the Chipmunks? And as always, our feature presentation is the movie that featured our mystery movie quote from last time. Did you know this quote? Well, you should have because we covered the first half of this film in our Halloween special part one. Yes, it's The Nightmare Before Christmas, but this is such a unique and beloved film that involves everyone's two top favorite holidays, I couldn't possibly just feature it as a Halloween film. This is equally a Christmas movie, and last we talked about it, I left you hanging saying Jack Steals Christmas. 
He accidentally discovers Christmas Town, and since he's so tired of doing his same old Halloween routine, he attempts to do his own version of Christmas. He dedicates himself to studying it, learning everything he can about it, and even his loyal subjects help him to execute his dream. But what we come to find is, though how hard he tries, he's just too scary by nature. Though the film doesn't discourage you from following your dreams, the emphasis is a bit more on sticking with your true nature. Just because you can appreciate something different, doesn't mean you have to be it. Jack's plan literally blows up in his face and Sandy Claus and Sally, who never believed in his plan to begin with, have to help him pick up the pieces. This is definitely one of my top five favorite films, and I gotta watch it at least twice a year. Though I think I like it more towards Christmas. How about you? And here's a silly little Christmas mashup for you. Christmas is for children. It's it it's not Only if it snows, though. And now, listen up for today's mystery movie quote. Thanks for saving me. <laughs> Saving you? Is that what you think I was doing? Uh-huh. Wrong-o. I merely noticed that you are improperly packaged, my dear. Hold still! Max, pick out a bow! Can I use your finger for a second? Another modern Christmas classic. Oops, I shouldn't have said that. Consider it a hint. And yes, our first Christmas special comes to a close. But don't worry, we still have three more Christmas specials coming up. Stay tuned and let us know in the comments what's the most nostalgic part of Christmas to you. I hope you enjoyed today's content. I hope it brought back memories, made you feel nostalgic, or maybe even showed you something new. This has been Treacle Matter, your nostalgic connection. I'm your host, Joseph Nocera. Thanks so much for watching, and please stay tuned for another great nostalgic episode next time.